So let us begin our exploration of service authentication here with the least exciting of the different use cases. That being the addition or configuration of a user account onto a service itself. I'm here on our server file one. This is file1.company.pri, and the only reason I'm here is to bring up the services view right here, the console, where we can take a look at the services that have been installed onto this machine. Now, these services are installed as part of Windows. There's also a couple here that have been installed as part of different applications that have been installed onto the machine. Uh, typically, when you install an application, a lot of times if that app has some piece of it that needs to execute at all times, it will install as a service. I mean, the whole point behind services is that they are executables that are running whether or not you're accessing the app directly or not. Most often, you'll see these services on the server operating system, less so than on the desktop OS, because it's services that indeed need to run all the time, which is really what a server OS is intended to be. Now, all of these services down here, as you can see, have different statuses, and for each, there's a startup type. Uh, I think you've probably seen all of these before. The most important part for our purposes here is over here on the right, where it talks about the login as, or essentially which user account or which context under which that service is operating. You'll notice here that a variety of these services have a context called local system or local service or network service. And for our purposes here, for the 7411, just recognize that these default kind of built-in contexts here provide different execution spaces for these different applications to work in. In the case of local system, local system has fairly extensive privileges on the local computer. The local system account arguably has more privileges than even you as an administrator account because it operates as the system itself. There is essentially nothing on a computer that local system can't do. Uh, local system also has the right to access the network as the machine, so operating under the context of the computer account. This is very different from local service. Local service has very minimum privileges on that local computer, and if it attempts to contact things over the network, it will present anonymous credentials. The idea being here that uh, local service gives you the ability to define an execution space that is very limited for services that are not natively part of the operating system, so external services. Now, one of the important differences here about local service is the fact that local service has no abilities to contact the network as the computer account. But sometimes you have services that don't need to have godlike access, which you would get with local system, but don't need to have an exceptionally limited amount of access like what you would get with local service. For that reason, we have something in, a, in the middle here called network service. Network service also has minimum privileges on the computer, kind of similar to local service. However, network service has the ability to access the network as the machine using that computer account. I would be aware of what these three accounts are and just the progression of additional accesses that you get starting with local service, going through network service, and ultimately to local system, mainly because they, they feel like decent test questions. Honestly, you don't find yourself manually creating all that many services here in the Windows OS, except if you're packaging software. So you don't often find yourself adjusting what the logon value is. Now let's pick down here uh, one of the example services here. I want to find one that's not actually a Windows default service, like our VMware Tools service. I'm choosing this here also because if you're using VMware Workstation, you probably already have this on your machine as well. Now it's here in the general tab where we can take a look at some of the startup type and service status information here for this service. This is set to start up as automatic, uh, although we could start and stop the service down here if we wanted to. The big deal for what we're looking for here in terms of authentication happens under the logon tab where we have the ability to configure how this service is going to log in. Now, as you can see here, the only option we really have that's exposed here in this graphical interface is for local system. And uh, we have the ability too for this service to interact with the desktop in interactive mode, although I believe this is deprecated here at this point with, with this operating system version. But occasionally you may find that services that are installed as part of some application may be installed as, for example, local system, but instead need to interact with the rest of your network through some Active Directory account. This actually can happen commonly when uh, you're installing different applications because the person building the application may not have built the service in such a way that uh, later iterations of that application are able to connect with other resources on the network. Now, for that reason, you may occasionally have the need to switch it from a local system account to a named account, which can be either a local account here on the machine file one, or can also be a domain account here from our domain company.pri. 
Now, in order for us to be able to use a domain account, we have to have one available. So let's go ahead and create a domain account that we can use here for the purposes of executing this service. I'm gonna flip back over here to my server dc.company.pri. And the only reason I'm doing so is because it's here where I have Active Directory users and computers currently installed. Let's go here in our company users OU and create a new user down here. We'll call it our SRV account. And then the user logon name here will be the same, our SRV ACCT. The idea being here that we're creating a user account in the domain with a password, just like you would any other user account. But the difference here is that this user account will be used not to allow a human being to log into the environment, but instead to allow this service to execute as this user account. Now, when I create this, I need to ensure that the user doesn't need to change the password at the logon. So I'll deselect the box here. Back in the old days, when you're creating service accounts, a lot of times you would check these two boxes too. Uh, because these two boxes essentially prevent the password from being changed and ensure that it never expires. But as I said, the whole reason behind all this extra service stuff we're dealing with is to eliminate the need to check these boxes and maintain the security posture of our environment. So if I unselect these, what I'm effectively creating here is a user account here in the domain. I would then need to provide this user account with the appropriate privileges that that service will require to access other resources here in the domain. Maybe you've created a global group that's associated with the other different uh, users or other different computers in this domain that this account needs to work with. Well, it's here where you would, in the properties of the account, go through and actually adjust the membership of this, this user account. This gets into a level of detail a lot of times that you don't see with service accounts, but occasionally you have the need to perhaps give it administrative privileges, at least on the system, so on that machine it's working with. I will do something you probably should never do here, which is to add this account into the domain admins group. I say never because a lot of people still do this with their service accounts. But adding it to domain admins virtually guarantees that the account and its use on one system will be able to work with all the other servers on every other machine in your environment. Again, don't do this in production, but at least it gives us this flexibility of working with those machines. I'll choose OK here and come back to our server file one, where we can, here under company.pri, now configure the account that we want to use for this service, so our SRV ACCT. When I do that, I have to punch in the password again. So there's my password. I believe I'm punching it in correctly. And if I choose the OK button here, you'll notice that we get this dialog box that says the wizard has already granted that account, so our SRV ACCT, the logon as a service right. Got to have that here on the system, essentially, for this service to be able to do what we want it to do. So I'll hit OK here. I'll uh, also identify that the new logon name will not take effect until you stop and restart the service. So I'll hit OK again. And then in order to actually make this function, I need to then restart the service underneath the new context. Now, I'm not actually going to do this for this service because occasionally services are encoded such that if you attempt to give them a domain account and they really intend to have something like local system, well, they're just not going to function. So I won't actually restart this here for the VMware tools, but what I want to show you is that now the logon as value here has been configured for that account, our SRV account in company.pri.